Okay, in the solutions of the worksheet uh, B, we forgot to include problem five, the problem on uh, Lagrange multipliers. Let's solve it now. So we want to find uh, find the mean and max uh, for f of x, y is equal to x, y on the ellipse uh, x squared plus 3y squared is equal to 18. So what we want to do here is we want to begin by defining a function whose uh, that has the uh, ellipse the constraint as a level set, a level curve in particular. So that could be x squared plus 3y squared minus 18. And then the method of Lagrange multipliers tells us that we should consider the system in order to find the critical points. That is, um, the gradient of f is lambda times the gradient of g and g should be equal to zero, which translates to what? It translates to yx, that's the gradient of uh, f, because y is the partial derivative of x, y with respect to x, and x is the partial derivative with respect to y of x, y. And that should be lambda times uh, the gradient of g, which is 2x, and 6y. And of course, we should also have that x squared plus 3y squared is equal to 18. So that will give us uh, y is equal to 2 lambda x, and x is equal to 6 lambda y, and x squared plus 3y squared is equal to 18. And here, we should make the remark that uh, x, y, and lambda cannot be zero. Why not? Uh, so if x were zero, then the first equation tells you that y is zero, and that's impossible because of the constraint. So not possible, because you cannot have in the constraint zero squared plus three zero squared equals 18. Uh, same if y is zero, then the second equation tells you that x is zero, again, not possible. And of course, if you had that uh, lambda is zero, then both x and y would be zero by the first two equations, again, not possible, which means that x is different from zero, y is different from zero, Lambda is different from zero, and the reason why I, I like this a lot is because it allows us to uh, divide the first and the second equation. We cannot just divide if we do not have an assurance that the quantities involved are non-zero. So when you divide, there are nice cancellations here, and eventually you get 3y squared is equal to x squared which now you can plug into the constraint and that will give you uh, 6y squared is equal to 18, which means that y squared is equal to three, which means that y is equal to plus or minus uh, square root of three. So here uh, we have two possibilities. If y is equal to square root of three, then we get uh, x squared plus nine is equal to 18, which implies that x squared is nine, which means that x is plus or minus three. That yields two points. It yields the points three comma square root of three and negative three comma square root of three. On the other hand, if y is equal to a negative square root of three, we get the exact same thing. It doesn't change. So 
that means that x will be again plus or minus 3. And we get uh, 3 comma negative square root of 3 and negative 3 square root of 3. Uh, negative square root of 3. That gives us four points. And here we have a domain, namely the ellipse, which is a compact domain. So the minimum and the maximum are guaranteed to exist. So if we use a little table here and evaluate the function at these four critical points that we found, then uh, we will see where the minimum and where the maximum occur. So if we plug this into uh, f of x, y, which is x, y, we'll get 3 square root of 3, negative 3 square root of 3, negative 3 square root of 3, and 3 square root of 3, which means at this point we have a maximum. Here we have a minimum. Here we have a minimum. And here we have a maximum. OK, and this completes. Um, Problem number five. And now we have actually completed our worksheet B.